Hi, I'm Jamie with Lakeville Homes, president of Lakeville Homes. I'm Jamie with Lakeville Homes, president of Lakeville Homes. Uh, this is a project that Lakeville Homes is taking care of actually for me and my, my own family. So um, we started this process probably back in November. Uh, the previous owners of this house were clients of Lakeville's where we built them a custom home over in Green Lake. They are an older couple. They were looking for a house that was a little bit smaller. Um, essentially, it was going to be their downsize home. So over in Green Lake, they have a nice 2,500 square foot house where they can walk to all sorts of restaurants and amenities and around the lake so they're loving that but they brought us in to take a look at this house and they were ready to get it for sale and they've owned it for I think 30 plus years um, there was a number of things that they needed to do and uh, I, we helped them put together some numbers and I mean fifty thousand dollars for paint and carpet and um, taking care of some cosmetic things they had some mold downstairs things along those lines and it really became a factor of do they spend that money list it and uh, then move on, or do they find a buyer like us, which it happened to work perfectly for me and my family. I could see how this home would work for us, and so we negotiated with them, and here we are, now owners of this home that is totally unlivable, but it didn't start that way. So we, let's see. So to get to this point, we closed on the house in February end of the month there. Uh, had to get all the financing in place and so forth. There was asbestos that had to be, take care of, be taken care of. Um, there were permits that we had to get. So um, I, I happen to be a licensed architect, so I did most of the drawings on, on our side and, and got the drawings ready for the city of Mercer Island to take a look at, review, and issue our permit. Um, that was a fairly expedient process because I worked with the because I worked with the city there and know the people, they walked me through the process as far as uh, the, the quickest way to get to the end results. So um, we started construction at about the beginning of April, about the beginning of April. So we did demolition. Um, when you look on the outside, we've made some minor revisions to the, to the uh, roof line of the house. So we've raised a portion of it. It was just kind of this long linear split level home. We really wanted to break it up and, and, and it lent itself to being um, of a more contemporary aesthetic. So we think we've achieved that with, uh, with the modifications that we've, we are pursuing. Um, on the inside here, it, as you can tell, it's a job site. It's pretty much a cosmetic gut. Um, we've relocated a few rooms, so we used to have a pretty small 10 by 10 kitchen over on this side of the house, or actually towards the center of the house, and now we've moved it over here where it can really be part of this big public entertaining space. Um, it's going to be a great spot for us to not only live as a family, but to have people over and really enjoy. Um, you know, where we are as far as the process goes right now is uh, the upstairs is framed. We're doing locating some, relocating some of the plumbing lines and mechanical lines downstairs to meet the new reconfiguration. Um, what you're not seeing happen here on the site is I'm finalizing all the choices for the appliances and for the finishes and uh, electrical and choosing light fixtures, plumbing fixtures, those sorts of things. So it's really fun um, if you don't find it overwhelming. And this, this is really the point where um, we make the house ours. Uh, we, we give it a personality and it really starts to take on its own flavor and life and um, I get really excited about it, which maybe other people don't, but I understand that. Um, what's to come, this whole project should be about five months. And uh, that's from start of construction to being able to move in. Doesn't include any of the pre-planning. These projects generally seem to take longer than people expect. Um, but you know, we want paint to dry. We want the walls to be straight and plumb. So we need to give it the time that it requires. Um, as we continue with this project, uh, some of the things that we're looking forward to is being able to have it on the Remodeled Homes Tour. So the Master Builders Association of King and Snohomish Counties, uh, the largest and oldest home builders association in the country, they put on a home, uh, basically it's a home tour, a tour of homes once a year in the fall. And so <laughs> we're supposed to be finishing this up around August. Um, of course, then school starts and all that good stuff. In the middle of October will be this home tour. So, fingers crossed, we're going to get this house buttoned up in, order, uh, in time to be a part of that, that show. And if we don't make it, I guess there's always next year. But we're going to make it. 
I'm going to make the contractor get there. Um, let's see, you know, so, uh, other aspects that people don't expect uh, when doing a project of this magnitude is um, the financing. You know, most people don't go into purchasing a house saying, yeah, I have a half million dollars to put into a renovation. Um, what they don't know is that there's financing options available. So not only are there the acquisition loans, but there are also um, rehab loans that are, can be tied into the uh, tied into purchasing a home. So when we purchase this home we have a mortgage uh, for what we didn't have cash for the home and then we also had a line of credit essentially that was approved to be associated with the project. So you know in order for the bank to do that they have to have some of our specifications, they have to have our drawings, they have to mm -hmm. feel good that the home that's going when it's complete is going to meet what the value that they're placing on it. Um, let's see, permit process. We were actually able to be, get a little bit fancy here with the city of Mercer Island. Um, they have an over-the-counter permit process and that is for interiors only. Now obviously as you look around you see that some of the windows and doors and openings have all been relocated. What we were able to do is first we applied for an interiors only permit and that allowed us to get started and move some of the walls. Then we did a revision to that permit which included all the exterior work, some structural calculations were required for where we raised the ceiling and the roof um, and we submitted that and then the time period to that time period to review went on while we were able to start demolition on the project here. So it really allowed us to kind of speed up the whole process rather than if we had submitted the whole thing at one time it would have been probably a three to four month review process and that wouldn't have worked so well with my own time schedule but also um, just with the carrying cost of a, of a project not being able to go anywhere. Um, let's see, every jurisdiction has their own uh, requirements as far as what, what they can and will issue a building permit for and under what time period. So if you're working with City of Bellevue, uh, City of Redmond, Issaquah, any of those jurisdictions, Seattle, DPD, uh, you'll want to have a conversation with the, the group there, the building officials there, so that you can figure out what's going to work best for you. And really they're used to working with homeowners, so they're happy to sit down and have a conversation with you and, and understand what it is you're doing and help you map out the best way to, to get there. If uh, obviously um, most architects and many contractors have experience working with the cities on these sorts of things, so I would definitely say you know talk to who it is, you, whoever your design team is, and put figure out what the best course is for your project. Um, don't go ahead and make assumptions, but open those lines of communication and have those people advocate for you. Let's see. Can you think of anything else, Holly? Um, just a random. How often do you come here? How often do I come here? Since this project's been under construction, I'm probably here about twice a week. Um, maybe once a week is out of necessity, and the other one is just to see what's going on, and I'm curious, and I love um, seeing the progress. And, and there's, uh, with how we designed this project, there's definitely a lot of room for um, decisions to be made as we're here. For instance, there's a beam over here. The support is a little bit different as far as where it drops down location-wise than we had anticipated. So, you know, figuring out the details so that it doesn't look like there's a beam that just stops mid-wall. We're going to go ahead and continue that out and there'll be some false framing and furring it out. Sheetrock will cover it, but at the same time, by the time we're done, it's going to look like it was intentionally done that way so that we could use the wall to display art. 